keep Dora out of the States. I'm kidding. Yeah, but leave it at the Dora. Hey, what's up? This is Christian. This is Bones. And I'm Goblin. And we are the Violent Cinema Review Crew. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! What's up? <laughs> As you can uh, see, we've adopted black and red. Shout out. Oh, yeah. I'm always black and red. I got you. Today, we're reviewing the Death March to Chisau, or I'm not going to, I'm going to fuck that name up and I'm going to fuck up the whole German pronunciation. So you'll see it up above me or in the description or whatever the fuck. But yeah, this is uh, his, not his newest film. Uh, it was his film from last year that's a uh, half documentary, half mockumentary kind of thing about marco clammer marco clammer is a german actor who's actually been in several big things but he's notably worked in the underground with people like uh, marion dora with uh, the yearning maria d he's worked with juval before as well it's basically just a retrospect on his life and uh, his lost love and his works with juval in the past and some of his ideas about life uh such as Mark, watching yeah death similar feel to like thomas and marco in that kind of regard but not showing like old footage it's all actual footage that they made for this Instead yeah of, like, showcasing behind the scenes there's a lot of like intercutting footage of juvel's other movies that marco was in but there's some new footage too of like solitude of the tormentors where like the be behind the scenes type stuff where Mar marco's even like well i'm supposed to be handicapped i should be sl walking slower and <laughs> <laughs> motherfucker made me laugh so much the visuals for the sexuality and, and where it's disturbing definitely goes there but the dialogue kind of makes it very confusing because if you don't pay attention to the first 10 minutes of it or anyway it's kind of it, it just seems like it gets all over the place especially with what they're talking about it doesn't have like the very like standard flow of narrative so it's kind of hard to pick up and exactly what the hell they're talking about you part of it so you really have to pay attention in the beginning to kind of get through the rest of it i'll lose you a lot in it to be honest and but then it chimes in with his you know violent sexual acts so i guess like get your attention back into it um and which there definitely are some scenes that were pretty gnarly yeah. the sex scene though i <laughs> have to say like i guess they're trying you know i get what they're trying to do with being really realistic with it but you can like definitely tell that he's just kind of like fucking right above the vagina i think they, they could have cut in that scene or maybe done a little bit better and i could seem more realistic there was a part so it did seem realistic but then there's like a couple well i i think it was more comfortability with the actress too because oh. like in a lot of the german like type films there's always they always try to they're always bare to bear there's no like modesty garments or whatever they're just trying not to like yeah. actually yeah, kick Fuck that cool. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying that they they did a good job through most of it. There, but there should have been there. There were a couple scenes they could have shortened or tied up so it made it more believable. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, I also like the part when I saw the opening credits. That was that was cool because then I got to know who like made the movie and stuff. So I appreciated okay. that. But okay, yeah. so here's the thing. I would say I would probably I'll probably give it a second viewing after this. I just didn't prepare for this because I was bored as shit. But now knowing that it's supposed to be a documentary. Because going in, I was just like, this, like, what the fuck's happening? This doesn't, like, what is this, like, I am no one, where it's like, oh, interview with a serial killer or whatever. But the fact that, like, it's a documentary with real people that I know nothing about, I'm like, oh, okay. So now I can, like, go into it kind of knowing what the fuck's happening instead of just, you know, because I thought this was, like, a movie movie. And I'm like, yeah. so what's the interview? What's what's happening? Like, what the fuck? But now yeah. that I know that, I, I can probably rewatch it and give a better review later on on uh, Letterboxd or not. Yeah, no, I get that. Because like I, I, when I went into it, too, I didn't really know what to expect. Juval just sent it to me. So it took me a little while to understand what the actual concept of the movie was, to be honest. Yeah. And um, what is the concept of the movie? I, I feel like there's um particular they're discussing. Well, the concept of the movie is basically... Fuck Mario and Dora is the concept of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> not fuck Mario and Dora. Uh, the concept of the movie, though, is basically it's a documentary about Marco Klammer and his troubles through life. But it shows the serial killer stuff is he he says in the beginning the movie, it's up to the viewer to decide what's real and what's fake, because a lot of people have called him like a misogynist and like a molester. And he has a piece of dialogue where people even called him gay for some reason, probably because he worked with Dora and Dora likes to do a lot of 
homoerotic stuff. Or I think even in Thomas and Marco, it's pretty, pretty. Isn't there a part where they're laying in bed jerking each other off? Yeah, there's some pretty. Yeah, there's yeah. some stuff there. But uh... I mean, you can act gay without being gay. Yeah. Shout yeah. out Wasteland. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yeah uh, but he he talks about that too is like fucking just because i make this type of art like, doesn't mean that i'm that person to be he, honest he, straight porn actors make more than the gay ones doing gay porn just for that simple fact so she oh, get that gosh. money boy get that money but yeah he, he even says too that he doesn't like watch like finish a lot of his movies because they are too disturbing for him which i get that concept too like shooting something that is fucked up it's so much more playful and you don't feel the tone that the final product is going to be when you're making it Mm -hmm. uh weirdly um it is fucking strange like doing some of the shit i've been doing recently for the new project i'm just like how is this going to come out because i'm just giggling and shit (laughs) (laughs) exactly yeah you could be laughing during a rape scene or fucking eating a baby for all right cry and then cry be like all right done oh my god haha laughing (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah it's movie magic but yeah he talks a lot about art and uh disturbing media and loss and alcoholism and it's intercut with previous scenes and uh i don't know i i personally enjoyed it quite a bit i always love juval's movies i haven't seen one i haven't liked uh but yeah I, i've I only seen cool. one and i haven't liked it yeah and also i think that it probably wasn't the right movie to show them first because another reason they're probably confused is that it was showing scenes from his other movies that i was aware of because i've seen his other movies and uh like it talks about like assault rifle throughout, which is Sturm Sturm Vega. I I can't say the name of the movie right. Yeah, um, please it, don't. Yeah, I fucking I give up. Um, but yeah, uh, it's probably not the best one to show them for their first viewing of Juval's work. Um, but as a seasoned fan, I I enjoyed it quite a bit. Like I don't even really think. I mean, just the fact that it's a documentary, I feel like I can't say I've seen his work. Like his movies, his story, true, his true. atmosphere, what I he wants to do. Movie. Whereas this is more of like a documentary well, interview piece with in, some of the, you know, some like scenes thrown it. in. But yeah, the the fake stuff was actually written by Marco too. Uh, it's not it's it's not like his narrative stuff or anything like yeah. that. So that's why I mean I can't really say like I don't like his work. I just didn't like this. But I feel like his work, yeah, obviously is going to be different than this. Yeah, yeah, it's it's much different. I was actually pretty shocked once i got into it because he's only really done narrative stuff that i've seen until this point uh, yeah. which was interesting it, that's why i was interested by it quite a bit is that it's a complete uh completely away from his other other previous work yeah so javal could be you know a perfectly capable director i just i did not like this movie in of itself but i was just kind of more bored than anything yeah if if i knew that was what this was going to be about i would have definitely shown you guys his other work first um but we'll 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 be getting into his actual newest um narrative film here soon his after the german premiere of uh suffer little daughter uh again i'm gonna keep trying to use the english translations of the names because i'm gonna botch the german ones um but yeah i i personally really really enjoyed it uh it's i just don't what? think it's available what? any what just the fact that like you're not a wrestling fan at all, but you said fucking botch, like it was like just casual, and I'm like, where did where'd you pick that up? Because it's a turn of phrase, botched, for like wrestling. When you fuck something up, it's like constantly used in wrestling. I've never heard it used outside the wrestling world. And there's literally a TV show called Botched about people botching plastic surgery. It's I should just probably t- get outside more. Yeah, it's just a turn of phrase for fucking something up. <laughs> I've literally only and ever heard more, it used with wrestling, and I was like, and "There's oh, more fuck. than just one ring." <laughs> that all? No, uh, but I don't think this one is available in America yet. But I know if you go onto uncut.tv, you could get a, a German release of it that looks pretty fucking sick. And I do believe it does come with English subtitles. Um, but I'm sure there'll be a American release of it, and sometime soon. Uh, I know. USA. Uh, USA. 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 Uh, I know uh, Jacob is working with Juval right now, so maybe we'll come out through Tarnished. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Uh, yeah. But yeah. In Canada. Uh, keep, keep a lookout for it, though. Uh, I definitely enjoyed it. God. 
I, I enjoyed it a lot. They didn't seem to, but again, it was kind of my fault too. Um, but yeah. Thank you guys. I appreciate you watching this episode. <laughs> Tuning in, watch his first work before you see this. Yeah, yeah definitely. Watch I the definitely, other stuff first. I, I need to go back. Assault Rifle or Sturm Sturmweiger, I really enjoy it. It's just his most plainly brutal, where it's just brutality throughout. There's no like uh overarching story. Yeah. Um, but Saltu to the Tormentors is a fucking great movie. Uh it's probably one of the only movies that have came out in the recent years that actually made me cringe throughout like almost the entire thing. Um Yeah, and I'll straight up say, like, again, Duval's probably like He's probably a great director. His other stuff's really good. This just this wasn't it for me. But also, again, I feel like it doesn't like really encompass what his work actually is. It does feel like an experimental documentary more than like a normal documentary. Obviously, um, I don't know. Maybe I'm just not smart enough to get it. Maybe it's one of those elevated horrors. <laughs> oh, fucking but... okay, okay. Let's just <laughs> let's just end it here. Thank you guys for listening. Stay tuned, and we'll have more shit out for you. And go to the Patreon so we can get that Walker for Christian. Patreons. I love all y'all. Goodbye. <laughs>